A pleasant and peaceful place. Yeah, we all seek a restful, peaceful place, don't we? Uh, I always like to go in Romania to the mountains. And I had a friend, Gary Matheny, in the city of Bushden. And he had a house up on the mountain. And you'd wake up in the morning, and this picture doesn't quite show the awesome and the beauty, but as you would wake up, you're there in the town, and the mountain is just, it's just there. On the top of the mountain, there's a cross. And uh, when, the, when the mist and the fog would come in the morning, it was just an awesome, an awesome sight. And you have many memories of us going up to the mountain or staying with Gary and going to different places. And uh, we had several couples retreats up there. And you just think of that restful place. You go out on the deck, uh, get your coffee, read your Bible, relax. And we seek a restful place like that, don't we? It's always nice to have that place of peace and rest. But sometimes we ask the question, does such a place exist? Or is this place something we can only go on for a one-year vacation? And we can get a little rest, and then the rest of the time we have to be stressed out. And the truth of the matter is that Many, in many places where we seek a safe place, we don't get it. Now, a safe, really the safest place, the two safest place I can, places I can think about should be the family and the church. Those should be safe places. Those should be places where you feel safe, where you're encouraged, where you're protected. And unfortunately... That's not always the case in the society in which we live. Sometimes those two institutions which should be there to help and protect protect us sometimes can be places of difficult. But as we we read this psalm, and uh, verse 11 actually is one of my favorite verses, and I've preached uh, messages on this verse 11 You'll show me the path of life in your presence is the fullness of joy. Your right hand of pleasures forevermore. But as we look, as I was looking at this psalm, I thought about this place that God wants us to have. And that place, you know, that, that place really is His presence. That place is not a geographical location. It's not a house, it's not the mountains, it's not the sea, it's not out in the woods. Those are nice and restful places, but the true, consistent place of rest and peace and pleasure and happiness and joy is in the only place we can truly find it, and that is in the presence of God. Now we see in verse 1, that it's a safe place. Notice he says, keep me safe, O God, for I have come to you. He says, uh, preserve me, O God. You think of that, preserve me, or protect me, or keep me safe. In you do I put my trust, or in you do I go for a refuge. There's a lot of talk on the internet about having a place of refuge for when the world ends. Amen. We have a place of refuge. It's in God, isn't it? And sometimes we think uh, of, uh, of a safe house. You know, somebody that's in witness protection. And let's find a safe house, a place where they will be protected, a place where nobody can get them, a place where they, they can be free. And so the presence of God is a safe place. Think of, think of how uncertainty Life, in certain life is. This young lady, 22 years old, had a concert, small gra- crowd, signing aut- autographs. Somebody comes and shoots her. Just Friday. And so we, 
we're very, uh, our safety, a safe place really isn't anywhere in the world. You know how mothers are with kids. You know, don't climb the tree because you'll break your leg. Of course, I'm there. Let them climb the tree. <laughs> or, you know, fam- mother's famous saying, if you do that, I'm, if you could, if you do that, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> so you, you, it's a no-win situation. <laughs> and, but a safe place is in God. A paraphrase of this verse would be, Keep me safe, O God, for I have come to you for a what? Refuge. Our safety is in one place, the presence of God. When we, those years we were, were in Romania, uh, people would come to me, Oh, are, don't you, you know, don't you, you feel afraid, threatened? And, uh, of course, my relatives oftentimes uh, would say, Oh, uh, everything that's going on over there. Well, we weren't in Romania. We weren't in uh, Africa. And anything that happened in the news was like, oh, you guys safe. You know what? I'm always safe. Whether I'm in Enfield, Connecticut, Constanza, Romania, uh, Rome, Italy, or even Istanbul, Turkey, my safety is in God, not in a geographical location. Keep me safe, oh God. And then this is a a good place. Notice verse 2. O my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, Thou art my Lord, my goodness extendeth not unto thee. Uh, a way of saying this to understand a little better. He says, I said to the Lord, you are my master. Every good thing I have, what does it say? Comes from who? God. Now we like good things, don't we? You know what the problem is? We're not good. We're not good. And as good as a person, as good as we think a person is, if you stay around them long enough, you'll find that they still have a little bit, you know, there's some kinks in the armor. Right? You're finding that about me now, right? It's been more than uh, the first month, right? You're finding, well, he's not as holy as we thought he was. He doesn't walk on water. But there is one that's good. God. Think about this. God never gives us anything bad. God never gives us the wrong advice. So he says, "My every good thing I have is from God. So in the presence of God, it's a good thing place to be. It's a place where God gives us good things, where we have pleasant things, where we have honest things. In His presence, we have that place of blessing, that place where we're with God. All our goodness and everything we have comes from God. And we're good this morning, by the way. We're good because God makes us good. If God, if God wasn't in my life, I wouldn't be so good. Probably wouldn't be here. But God comes into our lives and changes us. And never get to the one This happens sometimes when we have been in church a long time. We deceive ourselves and we think how good I am. Because I go to church every week. And I don't do this. And I look good. And... Wait a minute, that, was all, that still was all God. That's God's work and all the goodness we have is from God. So, it's a good place. And then, it's a place of true friends. I like what it says here. He goes on to say, But, the, but to the saints that are in the earth, and to the, and to the excellent in whom is all my Delight. You could say it another way, uh, a paraphrase. The godly people in the land are my, I like how it says this, true heroes. I take pleasure in them. Now, I've 
It's interesting how you can travel all over the world and you meet Christians and they're always willing to receive you and it's like you've known them all your life. I when we went to Italy, we went to Rome and I got, uh, we went, we actually stayed with a family. We didn't know, they didn't know me and uh, so we got there the first day and like within like five hours, it's like we'd known each other all our lives. In fact, it was interesting, the man, one of the men that we got connected with actually had started one of the works that we had continued in Romania. So we had, we had a connection there. And so there's nothing like true friends. Now, <clears throat> maybe, probably... That has not always been the experience in the church, unfortunately. Because we're not, remember, we're not good. Our goodness is from God. If we're not walking in His, what, presence? We want God's presence in our lives. When God, when Moses saw, what did he see? He said, I want to see if your presence doesn't go with me. And when he saw the presence of God, Moses was, what, changed. So if there's no change in your life, you're probably not walking in the presence of God. But the point I want to make this morning is that we want to... Listen, our goal... Think about this. Our goal as a church, it isn't to build a big church. It doesn't have to be... Our goal is to have a community of people where we can have true friendships. People want... People want today... Genuine relationships. They're tired of being disappointed. They're tired of being deceived. They're tired of people saying one thing and doing another. And so we need to strive. I would say, if you want to have a friend, be a friend. We should strive to be Christians that live in the presence of God and that show the, the character of God in our lives, that people are drawn to us and that we can have that where we could say like this, those people like Sam at Faith Baptist Church are my heroes. Think about that. And they can bring $50. Amen. We should have that. We should strive for that. It's, listen, it's not easy. Relationships are difficult and messy. And sometimes when we get hurt, we say, I've had enough of that. And I'm just closing my door and I'm not opening it up. We've all been there. But that, that, then God's not going to work. God works through people and relationships. So David... He thought about all the time. Think about all the times we think about King David. But if you follow, even when he was on the run from Saul, all the people that came and helped him, brought him food, brought him news, and gave him armor, he had those friends. And he said, those are my heroes. So in the presence of God, we have true friends. A place of true friends. And then... A sorrow-free place. A sorrow-free place. He says, Their sorrow shall be multiplied that hasten what? After what? Other God. Another God. Their drink offering of blood will I not offer, nor take up their names to my lips. Or we could say it like this, troubles multiply for those who chase after other gods. Could not that describe our society? We are chasing after anything. Now, because the evidence is so strong against evolution, they're looking for another way to describe our origin. They say now it's come from alien life. 
Yes, some of you look like aliens. I believe that theory. But so they're multiplying their sorrows. Think of the sorrows people are in. And sometimes I get so frustrated because I say, if you just look, the path is clear. It's there. It's not that difficult to figure out. I mean, think of the, if our government would just keep one single commandment. Thou shalt not lie or bear false witness. <laughs> that would change our government radically. Amen. They'd probably all leave. <laughs> and so the way of, of and, but the sorrows of idols and the, and how many people like Robin Williams who had everything, money, fame, and then life becomes so unbearable that they take their own lives. That's what idols do. That's why David said, I don't even want idols on my lips. I don't want to go to the place of sorrow. I want this to be a sorrow-free zone. That's what it is with the presence of God. When you're in the presence of God, it's a sorrow-free zone. One of my favorite verses is Proverbs 10, 11, which says, The blessings of the Lord makes rich, and what does he say? And he adds, no, what? Sorrow with it. When you steal stuff, it brings sorrow with it, doesn't it? Or when you extend yourself upon, above your possibilities with credit and you get something to become you become enslaved to it that's no fun right but when god blesses what does it say he adds no sorrow with it and so in the presence of god and this verse tells us uh, verse three tells a little bit verse four excuse me how he was in the pre- how was he in the presence of god because he wasn't in the presence of idols he said, I ran from him. You see, <clears throat> if you view the Christian life, you view, I want the presence of God. I don't want this other stuff because it brings me sorrow. I want to know God. So it's not a burden. The Christian life is not a burden. If your Christian life is a burden, I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't have any fun, you're not understanding what the presence of God is. You're still religious. David said, I want the presence of God. I want God. I've seen what people are doing, how they're sacrificing their babies and cutting themselves and having destroyed lives that are following the idols. That's no fun. I want God. And then it's a place of stability. A place of stability. We think of stability today in a house, don't we? We think of it in a physical location. All right? If that was true, we would be very, very unstable people for all the moving we've done in the past five years and the different places we've stayed. And so, stability is not in an address. It's not in a house. What does he say here? Verse 4, verse 5. The Lord is a portion of what? Mine inheritance. And of the cup thou maintainest. Notice he says, those maintainest thy lot. Or to put it another way, Lord, you alone are my inheritance, my cup of blessings. You guard all that is mine. Think about that. Think about God being your security guard. Huh? We have all the cameras today. And we have all the security systems. And we have all the alarms. And we still get robbed, Right? Now we get robbed through our computers, and even here in Connecticut, uh, you put the card in the gas station, they have those card readers. 
They put them on there and they'll take all your information and now they're doing it with Bluetooth. And so we're never totally safe. But he says, the land you have given me is a pleasant land. Why does he say, what a wonderful, what? Inheritance. Think about that. I know several cases in Romania, what they would do is they would, somebody would come and rent an apartment. And then, after they rented the apartment, they would put that apartment up for sale. And they would sell it. They'd bring people in and actually make up. And so people, you may have had an apartment, and you go there one day, somebody else is living in it, and they have all the paperwork. So, <clears throat> your inheritance isn't always guaranteed. The bank may come, the flood may come, the fire may come, some long lost, long, long, long ago relative may come and claim it. But our inheritance in God is something that is secure. Our security is in God. That's why, uh, that's why I, don't, I don't understand. I don't understand Christians that are living only for this world. Do we not have eternity? This life is a vapor. We have a little time. Only what we do for Jesus is going to last. <coughs> our rewards are in heaven. Listen, we are so uh, smothered by the American culture that tells us we have to have more and life is about things and life is about this. No, life is about serving God. He that has the Son has life. Life is in Jesus. That's real life. And so our lives, we are living, we're not just living for today. We're not living for things that can be taken. What a wonderful inheritance, David says. This is a place of stability. And then it's a place of guidance. Notice <clears throat> verse 7. I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. Life is confusing today, isn't it? I can remember... The first years we were in Romania, before they had all the European magazines and, excuse me, stores, they didn't have any of that. You had to go for the local people. And I can remember coming back on furlough one time and going in the grocery store and being overwhelmed because there was all these choices. You know, there were like five kinds of cereals at that time in Romania. If they had cereal. And so your, your choices are pretty easy. You didn't stress about it. Now you go and there's a whole row of cereals. And I can remember coming back and being like overwhelmed. All these choices. It's kind of how life is today. Well, what do you want to do in life? Well, there's a thousand choices and there's all these schools and all these things you can do. We need guidance, don't we? We need help. Notice what it, he says here. I will bless the Lord who guides me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken. Notice it says, for he is right beside me. And it says in our text, I set the Lord always before me because he has my right hand. I shall not be what? Moved. Think about that. Not only, <clears throat> you know, it's like one of those guys, you stop on the side of the road and you ask for directions. And he says, ah, go up here to the tree and take a left. And when you see the gray fence, take a right. And he sends you on his way. But Jesus just hops in the car and goes with you. In case you didn't understand the directions. He's there with you. 
So he doesn't just guide us, he goes with us. He's right beside us. See, that's the presence of God. The presence of God is guidance in our lives. He's there, he's with us, he's stable, he's showing us. In this life of confusion, he guides us and shows us. He says, I'll not be shaken as I go with God. And then it's a place of help. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. <clears throat> verse, excuse me, verse 9. Therefore my heart is what? So I say, glad. And my glory rejoices. And notice he says, my flesh also shall rest in hope. And it amazes me how many sicknesses people have today. People always run into the doctors. Always sick. Something. Some new allergy. Some new, you can't eat this. When my kids came back, my kids go to school, we couldn't, you know, we couldn't bring peanut butter to school. I don't remember that. You remember that, Bob, growing up? Anybody die of peanut butter back then? Uh, I mean, that's peanut butter and fluff. That's like the staple <laughs> when I was growing up. And so a place of health, and we see these people with all the kids, with all these different diseases, we say, what's, what is going on? I'll tell you what's going on. It's not just physical, it's spiritual. Our spiritual health affects our physical health. Notice what it says in a paraphrase. No wonder my heart is glad and I rejoice. No, he says, my body rests in safety. For you not leave my soul among the dead or allow your Holy One to rot in the grave. He's talking about Christ there. And so, health, spiritual health in the presence of God today. You want to get healthy today? You want to go on a diet? Get in the presence of God. Because he would say, my heart will rejoice. Your spiritual life affects your physical body. And many people today are suffering sicknesses. And the psychologist comes and wants to put you on medicine when really for many, many times it's a spiritual problem. But we don't want to talk about God. We don't want to go there because we'll have to recognize we're created in His image and He said, what did the Bible say? He breathed on us the breath of life. You are a spiritual being. Man lives not by bread alone but by what? Every word that comes out of the mouth of God. And then it's a place finally of joy and pleasure. And I love this verse. You'll show me the path of what? Life. The path of life. Listen, we're talking about life this morning. We're not talking about, I'm not talking about church. I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about life. The path of life is in the presence of God. That right here in our, what? Pleasures forevermore. You will show me the way of life, granting me the joy of your presence and the pleasures of living with you forever. At thy right hand there are what? Pleasures what? For what? Ever what? More. Think about that. The pleasures. Now there's a lot of illustrations I give for this verse. But we don't have time this morning. But I can preach a little longer because I have a soccer game today. Amen? <laughs> uh, but <clears throat> some of you can understand this. And some of you may have this experience. But you may remember growing up and you know, the TV first came out. And you know, remember the science fiction movies. The black and white. And when you first watched that, man, you thought that was cool 
And then, look where we are today. You got 3D cinema and all this. And I took Joe to uh, Civil War and I was bored, you know. It's like, ah, all right, you know, more and, you know. And we become bored. Now, if we'd saw, if we, if you could take somebody from the 60s, boom, bring them out of there. They just saw that black hole. And then you bring them to the cinema today. They probably wouldn't be able to breathe the word. They'd be in such awe. But for us, it's eh, yeah. Yeah, and other superhero movies. All right, next. <laughs> but here's the thing. Presence of God. It never gets old. It's always better. And it's always more. You cannot fully in your lifetime, discover the fullness of the presence of God. And that's why he says, there are joys and pleasures, not just here, but forevermore, because as we go through eternity, we'll discover more and more about God. Listen, if we, and, and, and people use this, the atheists and all this, and all these questions about God, listen, if we could put God in a science textbook, he would not be God. How can the finite understand the infinite? We can't understand everything about God. But, he has given us something today. His presence. He's given us his presence. His presence, it's a safe place. It's a pleasurable place. It's a good place. It's a secure place. It's a place of health. It's a place of guidance. It's a place of blessings. We have today the presence of God. And that's why Moses cried out, Lord, your presence doesn't go with me. I'm not going. May it be the prayer of us this morning. I'm not living anymore outside the presence of God. Whatever I have to let go, I'm letting go. But I want the presence of the all, true and living almighty God in my life. Let's stand together as we sing. And as we pray...